What's going on everyone? Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to use Friendly ID to add readable URLs to our blogging application. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. With all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. So let's open up a new tab and let's just look up the gem friendly ID and we're pretty much just going to follow along with the instructions of getting this set up on our blog post. So let's just go ahead and copy this gem friendly ID and let's jump over to our code. I'm going to close everything down that we were using in the last episode. Let's open up the gem file and we'll just paste this down here. And then we'll go and we will stop our server and then bundle and install. Once that finishes, we need to add a slug to our post uh, table in our database. So what we can do is run Rails G migration. And then we can call this pretty much whatever we want. Uh, the standard thing to do would be to say add slug to posts. The only thing that really matters here with these migrations is that the last word matches the name of the table. That sort of helps Rails know what to do. So then we can say slug. And um, actually, let me just jump back over here and make sure I've got everything that I need. Yeah, so it needs to be unique. That's the only real requirement there. So we'll just add unique to it. And then we will migrate the database once this migration finishes generating. And then once we finish that, or once that finishes, the only thing really left to do is Rails generate friendly ID. And then I guess we need to migrate the database again. So we'll say Rails G friendly ID. And then we'll also go ahead and migrate this. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at what this is going to do for us. So what we have here is they have this example with class user and they're just extending the friendly ID class and then it's calling um, this friendly ID name use slugged. So let's copy this because this is basically what we want and then we can look back over here in our, um, where would that be? That would be in our post class. So right up at the top, I'm just going to paste this in. Now we don't have a name. What we have is a title. So let's take a look at what we can do with this over in our terminal. So if we go to our Rails console and we said something like um, post.create and then we give it a title of hello world and then a description and the description needs to be 50 characters long, so we can say A times 50, and that'll spit out 50 A's. And then it needs to have an author ID, and then let's see, let's just do author.first.id. So let's create this thing. And so you can see here now, this thing prints out this slug hello world. So then we can also do the following. We can say post.friendly.find and then give it back the slug. And it's going to basically look at that slug or look up that post based on the slug. So we need to actually fix all of our existing posts because none of them will actually have slugs and that's going to break the lookup ability. So what we need to do is say post.all and then we can just some, like tell it to save each one. Uh, maybe we can say dot each. I think that's how that should work. And then now you can see here that each one has its own slug. So that'll be good. Um, and you'll need to do that if you have existing content that you haven't already uh, done that for. Or that you created before we installed this rather. So we can go ahead and start our server back up. And let's go try this in the browser without changing anything else just to kind of see um, what is going to go wrong. Okay, and I have to fix that sign in thing. I don't know what's going on with that. So if I click on, if, if I hover over this, you probably can see down in the very bottom left hand corner of the screen, it's trying to go to slash post slash the slug and then slash edit. And if I click on this, it's going to break and say we can't find a post with that ID. So naturally what we can do is jump back over to our post controller 
and then down here instead of just saying dot find we can say dot friendly if I can spell friendly dot find and that should fix the problem so that's the core of what we needed to do um, there's a couple of other things that you might want to take into consideration and that is what happens if you change the title so let's just change this to hello there and now we can see that we're still on this page but the slug is still this thing so what we might want to do is figure out how can we update the slug to actually match the title now we may want to put some rules in place about either one of two things we might not want to change the slug after the post is published because once it is published uh, there could be links to it and we don't want to break those links that's bad for SEO and all sorts of usability reasons um, so we can either make it so that you can't change it after you've published the post or alternatively we can make it so that we keep a record of all of the slugs somehow and you know look it up like that so Maybe we'll talk about that in a minute, but for now I just want to show you how to change the slug when you change the title. So to do that, we can go back over to our post model, and we can define a method called should generate new friendly ID. And for now, I'm just going to stick a binding.pry in here, and I'm going to change this up a little bit. and then we'll see what we have. So we're inside of our post where we just define this method. So this is happening in some kind of after save hook or something like that. I don't know for sure, but I think it's something like that. We can check in here. We can see title changed question mark and that's going to tell us true. Um, there have been some changes to how this works in newer versions of Rails, I think. Uh, if anybody has any info on that, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Um, but for now, this is what we want. We want to say, if the title changes, we should generate a new friendly ID. Um, so uh, we can actually just put that inside of that method. It needs to return a Boolean, and if it does, it will go ahead and update the uh, friendly ID. So let's just come in here and say, title changed. And then let's uh, come over here and refresh that, and then let's give this a shot. So now you can see in the URL, we're now at hello there. So that's pretty good. So I did some quick Googling and I came across a stack overflow that kind of explains how you can work with this history thing. So I thought, hey, let's just copy and paste it and see what happens. So let's do that. So over here, instead of just having slugged, let's try to add this uh, slugged history with these finders and we may not actually need finders I'm not sure we may just need slugged in history um, but in any case actually let's take it away and let's see what happens I'm all for experimenting even if it's just on a screencast so um, let's go back over here and let's try to change the title around so we got hello there right now let's make it hello there again and so as it was before we're getting redirected to hello there again but now if we go to hello there nothing okay let me try to put back the finders um, still nothing let's refresh this hello there okay so that's working if I change this to be hello there again do I get to go back to hello there so it seems like you have to have it in place and then so you have to have it seems like uh, just and again this is from trial and error not from reading the documentation or anything from trial and error if you have all of these things here and you actually modify the title with all of those things in place you get the history so if you want to use that I guess you probably have to have that basically from the beginning um, if you want to actually keep track of the history so if we made this ASDF and then we try to go to hello there or hello there again it's all still working and then obviously we can go back to ASDF okay so then what does it point to okay so then the link sort of by default points to ASDF which will be the most recent so that's pretty cool and that gives us a good way to handle the historical stuff
Okay, great. So with that done, in the next episode, I'm actually going to start building out finally the actual blog front end so that we can publish blog posts and people can read them somewhere. Um, so it's going to be more of a design thing. There's a little bit of a back end architecture thing that we have to worry about. Um, but in general, um, it should be a little bit more focused on the front end and styling for another couple of episodes. And then I do have a fair bit more to add on the back end. Um, and then we need to deal with some stuff like pagination and full text search and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot left here. I could easily see 10 or 15 more episodes in this series. Um, it's going to be a pretty long one. Um, so if you're enjoying this and you want to stay up to date with the series, check us out on techmaker.tv. Uh, we have a lot more content over there. And then obviously subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'll be posting a lot of videos on here as well. So with all of that said, I will talk to you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching.